Hello, welcome back to Math 112, Calculus 2. Our topic for today is convergence of Taylor series, error estimates. Remember, these convergence properties of Taylor series match with those of Maclaurin series and Power series. Maclaurin series are just subsets of Taylor series, and Power series are a different expression of Taylor series. Let's state Taylor's theorem. f of b is f of a plus f prime at a times b minus a plus f double prime at a over 2 factorial b minus a squared plus all the way up to the nth derivative at a over n factorial times b minus a to the n. Plus, now this is the error correction term. The n plus first derivative at some point c over n plus 1 factorial times b minus a to the n plus 1. C is some value which is between a and b. Similarly, f of x can be written as f of a plus f prime at a at times a mi x minus a plus and so on up to the nth derivative of the function at a times x minus a to the n over n factorial plus that last term that we had before, we're just going to call it R sub n of x, R standing for remainder. So here's our remainder term, R sub n of x. It's the n plus first derivative evaluated at some point c between a and x over n plus 1 factorial times x minus a to the n plus 1. This is the error correction term. The next term in the Taylor series would have been this term with a C replaced by an A. But if you write the C in place of the A, you take into account all of the remaining terms. That's why it's called the remainder. So it's important to remember that C is between A and X, depending upon whether X is less than A or greater than A. R sub N of X is called the remainder, and it will serve as our error estimate. Now this allows us to look at a very interesting example. This is actually called Euler's formula. e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. If we look at e to the i theta in its Taylor series, or Maclaurin series, since we're going to be expanding about zero, e to the i theta is the sum from k equals zero to infinity of i theta to the k over k factorial. Now when we multiply this out, the i will only remain for odd powers. And we see that sometimes there's a negative one and sometimes there isn't if we expand e to the i theta, depending upon what k is. So what we do is we isolate the even powers and we isolate the odd powers. The even powers are the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k, e to the 2k, over 2k factorial. We factor out the i from the odd powers, and we get that the odd powers are the series k equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the k, theta to the 2k plus 1 over 2k plus 1 factorial, times i. So. What we see is that e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. And we've actually proven this using the infinite series expansions of these three transcendental functions. This is one of the ways in which infinite series prove to be so useful in mathematics. We'll be talking more about this as well in the future. Hope you can join us next time.